Even though TrueNAS offers enterprise level features, the software is actually available completely for free, which is why many home users choose to use TrueNAS as their operating system of choice to power their NAS hardware in their home networks. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate a couple things in the web interface to show how simple it is to do a couple basic tasks in case you might be a little bit intimidated trying to use uh, software that might have some enterprise type features in it. Um, so uh, let's begin, I'll show you how easy it is. In this video, I'm going to be using TrueNAS Scale, but this uh, should also apply to TrueNAS Core. A lot of the features are similar. I chose TrueNAS Scale because I wanted to try out the uh, Linux-based version of TrueNAS. So I'm going to show in the first example um, how to actually update the software to show how easy it is through the web interface. Um, it's actually not super difficult. It doesn't take a lot of time. My system's a little bit on the slower side, not terrible. Um, so it'll take a few minutes, uh, but I'll walk you through that process. Okay, once you log into TrueNAS, you'll see the dashboard here. On the, on the dashboard, if you haven't modified your dashboard and you have the default dashboard, you should be able to just click check for updates. And you can see there's an update waiting right here. And all you really need to do is apply update. And you get, you will have the option to save your um, configuration settings, which I have actually already done. So I'm not gonna do it in this video. But, so I will click do not save. And then confirm. You really wanna make sure you wanna do your update because, and make sure you have everything backed up first. So otherwise they will proceed with the update. So make sure that they wanna make sure you're ready for this. So here we go. It's downloading, it's extracting. Um, as you can see, the process is pretty simple. You can go straight from your dashboard. You can click right in. Um, and, and I, I remember when I, 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 the first, when I first tried TrueNAS scale, the update feature did not work right. And so it would not pick up on the update. So I actually had to manually download the update, which is not difficult to do. It's how to grab off the website. And then there's an option you can update via the uh, file that you downloaded. So I just used that file and then it worked. But this last time around when I did my second update, it actually worked flawlessly. So now this is my third third version, my third update that I've had to do so far. Um, as you can see, I don't have the fastest system, it's not the slowest either, but it takes a little bit of time, not, not too bad. It's um, almost there, it's 95%. I'm doing this in real time to show you how simple it is. <laughs> um, but also the video would be really short if all I showed you was how to assist, do a system update. So I am, that's why I'm combining two tasks in with this video to show you two different things to make it, uh, to show how easy it is. So updating is very simple. And then after I do that, I'm gonna put in my second SSD um, boot disk drive and make it a mirror. Um, one thing to note about that while we're waiting for this to do its thing is, oh, look at that. It's uh, system is refreshing. Um, so it's waiting for it to come back up. But anyway, one thing I was gonna mention about the boot drive, I actually, they're not the same size, but TrueNAS doesn't take up a lot of space and I don't really have any extra drives. I don't really wanna buy one right now. So I'm just gonna use a smaller drive, but Together, it, you know, when you do a mirror with that, you're going to lose a little bit of capacity. But um, I saw plenty of space because TrueNAS may take up like less than 10 gigs of space. So um, any SSD will work. And I didn't want to dedicate a larger SSD just for the boot disk so I don't waste all that space. So I really want to, as, that's why I'm using a lower capacity one. I have a 256 gig disk in there. And now I want to throw a 128 gig in disk in there, SSD in there. So it's going to lower my overall capacity, but I'm not really worried about that right now. So maybe in the future when I get another 256 gig disk or something, I can just slap it in there. Um, 250 gig disk or whatever. So it, I don't know if you can hear that in the background. My server is rebooting in there. <laughs> so it's still it's doing something. So um, it's a little bit, the beeps on that, it's actually kind of a little bit louder than a consumer grade motherboard. So I actually bought a cheap use bare minimum server motherboard that has ECC RAM in it so that I can actually have TrueNAS using ZFS, using error corrected memory, which is the, you know the ideal scenario for ZFS. I ran it in the past without ECC and it worked fine, but um, 
I thought since I was building a dedicated system, I might as well buy cheap used enterprise hardware. Um, and since it's a surfer motherboard, it's actually a lower powered one. It doesn't even come with, it didn't come with a fan. It just has a heat sink on it. I've been running it with that. And because of my server closet, it's been cool enough. It, it still runs at like 36 degrees, you know, Celsius. So it's no, no problem with that overheating. It actually runs cooler. It actually runs a lot cooler than my, um, mini PC firewall boxes that don't have fans. They're fanless PCs. They're a lot, they run a lot hotter actually, cause there's no fan in it, but I'm just trying to kill some time while this boots up and I'll show you like, um, how this is happening here. Cause it's not, like I mentioned, it's not the fastest machine, but it, it, it's plenty fast for NAS purposes for what I need it for. Since I'm not running a bunch of software on it. Um, just got a super micro motherboard in there. Um, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, as you might have seen in my dashboard you know, a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah, I just need a refresh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to skip this part. This is where I put my password in, but I'm going to use my password manager. Okay, I put my username and password in there. Oh, look at this. I have upgraded my system now to the latest TrueNAS scale. No problems, no issues. It took a little longer than I thought. So that's one task done, and we'll do the next one here and coming up. For the second um, task, I'm actually going to update my boot drive on my um, TrueNAS scale system to become a mirrored pool, disk, yeah, mirrored disk pool. Right now, I only have a single disk that I installed TrueNAS on. At the time, I didn't have an extra SSD, and now that um, I've move some hardware and change some stuff around. I actually have one extra SSD laying around that's a low capacity disc. So the cool thing is with TrueNAS, you, you can attach a disc to it and just you can, with, ZF, with ZFS, you can actually just create a mirror from a, an existing disc. Now, of course, you wanna make sure you may do a configuration backup before you do all this. Um, just make sure you, in case something bad happens. Um, but I've already done that uh, before I did this video anyway. So I'm not afraid to go ahead and just pull the trigger and do it. <laughs> so just as a little heads up, if you're doing this on your system, you might want to do that um, uh, first. One thing I'd recommend if you have a, a rack, a full, especially a full height rack, it's, you can't really get to it and you have it in the corner like I do. Um, if, if you get one that has a casters on the bottom, which many of them do come with that, um, it's very handy if you need to pull the rack out and work get in behind it to work on it because I, I do that all the time and then whenever I need to get to it I can just pull it out like so and it gets kind of caught on the tile a little bit but not too bad see how I can rotate this towards me what I'm going to do now is as you can see this is my true nest box with the sticker I have right here um, I'm going to unscrew it from the rack um, one thing that I uh, I might have mentioned before online is I actually bought rack I'll show you in a minute I actually bought a rack shelf rail instead of a, a sliding rail because I found it's really difficult to click in a heavy server that has a lot of hard that has hard drives and stuff in it into a rail when you're trying to balance it at the same time as sliding it in and clicking it in. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to unscrew this. I'm going to fast forward this part because it's going to be a little bit slow and then um, I'll show you the inside and we'll swap the drive out and then I'll we'll go back over to TrueNAS uh, web interface and to complete the um, mirrored boot drive uh, update that I'm trying to do here, upgrade or whatever I call it. <laughs> okay, now that I have it unscrewed, I'm going to show pulling this out. I'm just going to set it on the floor for now and then I'll move it to a table uh, and we'll cut the bat. Um, but I want to show what these rails look like. They show you an example like how easy it is you just slide it out and then it's easy just to set rest it in there and push it back in. You don't have to click it in any rails or anything and just screw them on and you're done. Um, so I'm going to take this out. It's pretty kind of heavy. I don't have like a ton of hard drives in it, but it's still heavy enough for sure. So as you can see these shelves here uh, in the video, uh, it should just set, the server just sets right on there and you slide it back in. As you can see, I, I pulled out my solid state drive that I currently have in there. And here's my new one that I'm going to add in to, to have a second drive for my boot drive. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's in a three and a half by to two and a half uh, bay adapter, right? So I'm gonna put this one in below and I'm gonna screw it in. Okay, now that that's screwed in, 
I'm going to attach it in here. As you can see, I added the second uh, SATA hard drive right here uh, as part of my mirrored boot drives, and I'm gonna fire this up on TrueNAS uh, in the web UI and see, show you how that process goes. Okay, now that I got the drive installed, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to slide it in with these uh, rack shelves right here. Um, uh, you don't have to worry about clicking it into any rails like I mentioned earlier. So let's demonstrate that. Boom. And then all I have to do is screw this in, which I, I won't bore you with that part. So I'll screw it in, plug everything in, and we'll switch over to TrueNAS. Once we log into TrueNAS, one of the first things you'll want to do is make sure that the disk that you added to your system is recognized by the system, is available to be used. Um, normally you can see this you know, in, in the BIOS when your system boots up, but sometimes that scrolls really fast, or if you're not paying attention, it's easy to miss it. Um, but in the web interface, it's really easy to see if um, that disk is available to use. So if you click on the storage uh, page, you will see that there's one unassigned disk, which is the one we're going to add as a um, to the to the boot pool to make it a mirror. Um, you'll notice there's an add to pool button here, but you don't want to you don't want to click that one because it'll add it it'll want to add it to your uh, any storage data pools that you have and not your boot disk pool. So um, so what we want to do from here is click on the system settings and then go to the boot page and then go to boot pool status. And you'll see in the boot pool status, there, there's our disk that we have. And we're going to attach a second disk by clicking on this menu. And there's a replace and attach button. Replace is important if you want to um, you know, upgrade to a larger disk or a disk failed or something like that. Um, you, can, you can swap out disks that way. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually swap it out um, you know, a disk, if there's a single disk to a new disk of a different size, that would be pretty awesome if you could do that because it probably just uh, clones it over with ZFS. Um, that'd be pretty slick. I haven't actually tested that yet, so but that maybe a future video that would be something <laughs> something fun to, to try out that would be kind of interesting. Um, one thing that I had to do, which took me a, a bit because I had to redo this part of the video, is I was going to attach a smaller disk to a larger disk. And of course, I was thinking maybe it'll just truncate the, the larger disk, but that does not work in the web interface. So uh, you have to have the same size disk or larger, or you're gonna error message. Cause I actually don't wanna buy another disk and I don't need large capacity SSDs. So I don't care if one one of my SSDs, it's already dedicated to the this system. I don't care if I lose like half the capacity. So I'm putting a 128 gig disk in and there's a 256 gig SSD in there. So I actually, what I had to do because I, couldn't do it the other way around because I had that's trying to put the smaller disk in second. So I actually reinstalled TrueNAS um, on the, the smaller disk and then I used the configuration backup and it got me exactly back to where I was. It was also, uh, I thought I'd go ahead and do that since I already had both disks in the system because it also allowed me to test my configuration backup, which you always want to test your backups, right? So this was, this was a good test for me to see how well the backup would work because I didn't touch the original disk. So worst case scenario, I would just go back to, I would just revert back to that disk. Um, but since I um, uh, had the, the smaller disk in there, I just used the configuration backup. It worked really well, and everything it looks like it's back up and running. All my shares and everything that I had, I don't, I didn't have a crazy complex configuration because I'm not running any apps and VMs on on TrueNAS right now on TrueNAS scale. Um, so I'm just using it as a VM. So if you are worried about configuration backups, that actually worked pretty darn well. So it actually replaced all my, you know, got all my users back and everything, all the permissions and everything I had set up. Um, so that, that's really nice. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to click attach and you'll see now my larger disc, the, the 256 gig, which it only shows the available, um, the actual usable capacity, it looks like 238 gig. So we'll click on that disc. I'm going to say use all disk space because I'm dedicating it to the boot disc. I'm not sure, um, when you'd want to use that. Um, cause it's probably not a good, probably not a good idea to partition a, uh, disc. It's your boot disc, um, on ZFS, but maybe there's there's some purposes for that. So we'll see here what happens. I'm hoping it'll work this time. Otherwise I wasted a little bit of time, but at least I know, hey, the configuration backup works, right? <laughs> Let's see what happens. It's, not, it's I see at the top, it's got uh, spinning arrows. Before it showed me an arrow, uh, um, error message, not arrows. 
Um, so I'm hoping it's actually doing its thing this time because now I'm using a larger disc um, with a smaller disc. Oh, and see, it says it's successfully attached. So awesome. So I'm actually doing this on the fly. I never done this before. I just assumed it's going to be easy because TrueNAS works really well. <laughs> I assumed it's going to be easy. The only hang up I had was I'm trying to add a, I was trying to add a smaller disc to a large disc and you can't do that. But I, I just went ahead and swapped out the disc and, and then, um, you see how quick that is with the SSD. Um, it, it just must have mirrored it over. Um, and attached it as a mirror. And it's pretty awesome you can do this to an existing disc. And, and, but that, that's a nice, awesome thing about ZFS, right? I just, up, yeah, I, don't, I didn't have to format the drive and you know, reinstall everything and, and do the configuration back up. I only had to do it in this case because I was trying to do it the wrong way, the wrong order. Because <laughs> if, if I was making this mirror from the beginning and I had the smaller disc, it would just use that smaller disc capacity. But, um, but uh, since, um, yeah, I did it after the fact. It actually made it a little bit more, a um, little extra step there and it allowed me to test my configuration backup. So I didn't really mind. It didn't take a lot of time, maybe it cause an extra hour or so of work just here and there. I wasn't like w watching it, you know, very fast and I had to do some other things. So, um, so uh, you see how quick that was and how easy it is. And now I, I now have a mirrored drive. I hope you enjoyed this video on TrueNAS where I showed, demonstrated a couple different uh, basic tasks you can do in TrueNAS to show you that it's actually not super overwhelming to do uh, certain things. Uh, the next video I'm gonna do in the future will be um, to add more stories to my main data pool. So I hope you stick around and, uh, and we'll see you next time.